Welcome to the 52 Love Podcast, your show for 52 lessons in 52 weeks. Before we dive in, remember you can find the audio version of this episode, along with the rest of the series, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, and Radio Public. And now, here's your host, Ms. Tanya Todd. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the 52 Love Podcast. For those of you new to the program, 52 Love began as a blog series last year, 52 Love Lessons in 52 Weeks. This year, we are exploring each of those tips with a new guest each week. This week's tip is to let your partner dress you, and here to talk about it are my guests, Victoria and Jamar King. Would you like to introduce yourselves and tell us what you do? Hi, how you doing? I'm Jamar King, um, military veteran, Army veteran, um, presently writing a book concerning um, covering my time in the military overseas working in Iraq. And this is my beautiful wife. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Victoria King, and I work for a UK company. I'm in finance. So tell us about your experience with this tip. Who dressed whom, and how did it go? I dressed him. And I. he looked amazing. He was a little bit uncomfortable first he says kind of hot but then he went with it and he looked good uh when we first when i when you approached me about this i was a little worried you know um we tend to have a good sense of humor in our household so i was Mm -hmm. a little worried about what she was going to dress me in (laughs) i I really really thought about dressing him like a clown but uh, (laughs) i did i did it crossed my mind for a second okay so i was worried um in the end she dressed me in a nice i forgot i even had the shirt um a nice dress shirt um some black jeans which were a little tighter than i'm used to but that's how she liked it i guess um dress shoes in dress shoes no sneakers um, mm. yeah usually i'm a t-shirt guy shorts sneakers if we go out, I throw some jeans on, sneakers, and maybe a dress shirt. So um, it was a cool experience. And we went to a bar first. And when we walked in there, um, the bartender that I know <laughs> is funny. He yelled across the bar, Why does it look like your wife dressed you today? <gasps> That's so funny. <laughs> and I said, so everyone at the bar turned around, looked at me, and I said, She did. And I explained the podcast. Um, a few of the females at the bar said, oh, my goodness, that's a great idea. Um, so, um, yeah, it was cool. At the end of the day, it gave me some kind of insight on, you know, I feel I'm a good dresser, but it gives you some kind of insight on what my partner would like yeah, to see me in. Like to see me in. So, yeah, try a little more in the future. And I, and, and I have mentioned it to him before. Why don't you put this on with you? He's like, no, no, no. So he likes, like, baggy jeans. Mm-hmm. And then- Jersey, he lives in Jersey, um, lives in Jersey in his shoes. So I've always wanted to, him to dress like that more often. I mean, he, he looked amazing. But yeah, I cannot believe the guy at the bar, the bartender said that. I'm like, I did. Actually, I, I did. I live in Henderson, from Jersey, but I do wear a lot of jerseys. Jersey. <laughs> yeah, but it was funny that the bartender said that. I mean, nice. he's seen me plenty of times. I feel... What I'm wearing looks good, but you can obviously see the difference when I walked in. He said, mm-hmm. why is my wife dressed as well? Yes. and then he gave us a free, a free drink, so. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Do you want to plug the bar? Um, no, there's the little bar in Henderson. It was um the Rainbow, the yeah. Rainbow Bar. We just started uh, Rainbow Hotel Casino. So we just went in there, got a drink quick, and then went to go eat. So, yeah, it was Very a good experience. Nice. I was planning on cheating. I put the outfit on <laughs> and I said, okay, you dress me. I was like, it's a little hot outside because it was like seven o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to change. And then I said, no, you know what? You pick the outfit. So I'm gonna I wasn't going to let him change. I just let him talk. So I wasn't going to let him cheat. That was all his thinking. But yeah, <laughs> but I would have preferred to be involved in the week of um, your spouse fills your gas tank. <laughs> she, she tends I get in the car and I say the 
the gas lights on and she'll say it just came on it just came on when i pulled up in the driveway so that uh, if that's not a week i think that should be a week spouse i hate fills the gas tank i hate putting gas i hate it with a passion I am right there with you. And yes, there is a tip about helping your partner with something that is usually their job. And I go into detail about how I don't want to put gas in, in the car. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. And then I, I work from home, so I don't drive the car maybe once a week. So whoever, he has his own car. So when he uses my car, I figure I'm not wasting the gas. You put the gas in. Or we'll argue about this off camera. So. <laughs> well, I'm with her. <laughs> like, there should be a gas fairy, just like there's a laundry fairy, right? <laughs> there is a laundry fairy because I put the dirty clothes in the hamper. And like later, they're hanging up in the closet. It's, right. it's a miraculous thing. Whatever. Same so reciprocate I by making sure that there is just magically gas in the car. Same as when I put dirty dishes in the in the sink, they just get cleaned overnight. Right, it's amazing. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> He's saying he appreciates you. <laughs> yeah. So he should put gas in the well, car. That's right. Out, whoever's doing the laundry, the laundry fairy, always comes up with money that I'll leave in my pockets. <laughs> I'll ask, "Hey, was the forty dollars in these jeans?" and and it's not like she's. It's not there now. It, yeah, she's not putting it towards gas, so we don't know what's happening. Um, I take it. I mean, if he leaves it in his pocket, it's fair game. He doesn't know it's there, and if he agreed. Asks, he, so I, I have given him some back. Okay, what are we talking about? You dressing me? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell us what was going through your mind when you were choosing his clothes. Um, I wanted him to look the way that I wanted him to love, not the way he likes to love. So I, what the, I would have actually liked a jacket too, like a dress jacket with jeans mm -hmm. to how I was being nice to him. But originally I was going to put a dress jacket with the shirt outside of the pants with jeans, you know, like Magnum. He was looking like Magnum yesterday. Right. I, no, he's the one in shorts, right? He's in Hawaiian shorts? Yeah, no. What are the... Um, I was looking like Idris. The, the other Ooh. two, the back in the days, they always were white. Miami Vice? <laughs> he was looking like <laughs> Miami. <laughs> whatever the other guy's name was? Yeah, you the other guy, not Tony Crackett. The white that was always in white. I like to see him like that. And he doesn't like like the dress jacket. So. She said Miami Vice. First of all, she said Magnum PI. This is why I love this woman. Magnum PI. <laughs> he was always in Hawaiian shirts and Hawaiian shirts. And I've yeah. never watched but, either of those shows, so I, <laughs> I can't help you. I'm sorry. That was way back uh, in the days. I guess it's our age. <laughs> yeah. I was young when it came out. Whatever. I'm only six years older. You know, he's always Messed it. Oh, when you were this age, I was only this age. When you were this age, I was only this age. He's just saying that because you look so good for your age. No one knows that you're older. <laughs> he was five. I was zero. That's the way he <laughs> does that. And I'm like, I am not a MILF. Is that what it's called? <laughs> no. Oh, that it's um, <laughs> cradle it's robber. Oh, cougar. 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 Oh, cougar. cougar yeah. yeah. Do you have any or... children? <laughs> we got a Brady bunch. Literally three and three. Well, yeah. then you Together. definitely qualify as a MILF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three boys and three girls. Don't feel bad if she's from Puerto Rico, so don't feel bad if you have to put sub <laughs> subtitles underneath while she's speaking. <laughs> it happens on occasion. She can understand me perfectly. Okay. I can. <laughs> Look, it's a little more than time you're expected. We're supposed to just sit here and talk about how you dress me. You know what? Was she supposed to physically dress me? No, well, that was up to her. Like, was I supposed to lay on the bed and put my legs up? That was between that? the two of you. I wasn't going to dictate how much touching happened, but, you know, if, no, I, if she I, wanted to I, do it that way, that's great. I went to the closet and just took everything out and hanged it right there. And I said, you close it in the closet. Well, I felt a certain way because I had to iron 
the shirt myself. <laughs> I think I should have did that. Actually, while I was ironing, I was like, she should have done this. You know, so, <laughs> like, that should have been in parentheses when you sent me the text. Mm -hmm. Have your wife iron your clothes. It was okay, but, but did you feel I, sexy while you were wearing the outfit? Did you know that you looked good for your wife? Did you go in there with that confidence that, like, yeah, she's going to take these off of me, too? <laughs> Well, that didn't happen, but it's, uh, <laughs> felt though. I put it on. I was like, okay, yeah, I wouldn't have put this shirt on because I would have thought it was a little tight. All the it, jeans, but it wasn't the you jeans. Would, you wouldn't put the jeans on either. Those I'd jeans have been in that closet for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So I'd have preferred the jeans have a little more room or be able to breathe in them a little. But um, mm -hmm. my thing is the jeans. He wears these jeans. All they all look alike to me. Like their jeans and they look like, um, they just look the same. I want him to get like more solid jeans, like blue, 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 or black, black, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why, I, and because I like that solid color. And for whatever reason, all his jeans look the same. Just like all her black shoes look the same. <laughs> There's no difference in like 10 no. pairs of black shoes. No, there is, she's the lady. She Have knows. you not went out? wear mismatched shoes on because they look the same? No, that's never happened to me. I smell a fib, but that's okay. <laughs> You're different. There's not two shoes that are going to be the so, same. When I walked in there, because obviously I'm going to the Rainbow, which is a local spot, to the bar first. So, like I said, I walked in, I was like, okay, I might be a little overdressed for in here. You know, when I stepped over the mm -hmm. homeless guy. And, you know, stuff like that. I was like, I might be a little, I didn't do that. Uh, I might be a little overdressed. And then I was like, it's fine. No one's really paying attention to me. <laughs> and then the bartender announces that over the bar. And everyone looked at me. No, and, everyone's oh. paying attention to you. Yeah. In fact, I think all the security cameras spun on me and everything. But You're um, a superstar, right? Right. But in fact, my mother was there too. <laughs> and she said, you need to undo that next button. And I was like, what? She's like, it's tight as hell on your neck. So I undid the button and felt a little more sexier. So, um, and like, she said, and she said, oh, her, you dress like my ex boyfriend. Yeah. She's, <laughs> my mother said I was dressed like her ex boyfriend. So I don't know. Don't know how to respond to that one. Right. But, how do you process that one? <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, it was, um, like I said, it was insightful just to see how she would like me to dress a little more. So I'll take that into consideration in the future. And we'll see. I will. I mean, tell you the truth, if it was reversed. Oh, I'd be so scared. Uh -uh. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Or would we, would you be open to trying it and reversing this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because spoiler we... alert, that is the next tip in the series. <laughs> you see if he was serious, right? Um, I don't know. It would be, it, I would really, really be out of my comfort zone. So when he introduced this to me, I immediately asked, are you dressing me? And he's like, no, you can dress me. And I'm like, okay, I'm on board. But I would be a little bit um, out of my comfort if he were to dress me. Because I'm very conservative. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That would be, yeah, that would be hard for me to to do and see that's the thing this is about pushing you just a little bit out of your comfort zone to bring you two closer together a little bit that is horrible. No, <laughs> that would be joke around. I, I understand that but it would be like tremendously out of my comfort to, and i'll be nervous um to see what he comes up with because i have massive amount of clothes in my classes mm -hmm. and shoes. i'd be afraid what he will pull out of there you know i start bear. slow oh. And just keep it at home, and then you won't have to worry about going out into public like that. And then once you establish that trust, let them dress you out in public. Uh, that's like you have no confidence <laughs> in what I would pick for it. You're basically saying. No, I, she, I'm helping her. I have confidence that you're going to make her look fantastic. I mean, look look yeah, at look at what me. you have to work with there. <laughs> yeah. When she dresses me, we go out into public. But when I dress her, we keep it in the house and play spades. No, if I'm... <laughs> Him, if I would allow him to do that, 
it, I would have to trust them if, if I can be that vulnerable. You don't I, trust me? It's not that I don't trust you. You don't understand this man. He has put me through a lot. I mean, he has paid sound me. like a beat you or something? He has oh, paid me. No, he, it, it doesn't sound like that. I've been in the bathroom. He has opened the door and literally recorded me and posted. But wait, <gasps> you have weights. You have. It's not like she was exposed for anyone to see. Exposed, she had a long shirt on, but it was revenge because the night before, I was asleep and I was extremely tired. And for the first time in forty years, forty six years of my life, I was snoring, and the dog was next to me snoring, and she videotaped it and said. This is what I'm dealing with, and it was me snoring and the dog snoring. So I said, it is on. It is on. You know, <laughs> that's it. So she made the mistake of... You have to here. think about the motivations there, though. For that, you guys are getting back at each other for pranking each other. But for this, your goal is to improve intimacy. So you have to trust that you're going to go into it with that in mind. Right. And I would, if I can be that vulnerable with him, I would trust him where I know that I have to leave the house. I won't just half it and stay in the house because then I'm not really trusting the progress. Right. So I would definitely continue to leave the house with him. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm still going to be uncomfortable and out of my comfort zone. But if I do something like that, I have to commit 100%. So. I, honestly don't, I honestly don't think if I dressed her, um, I wouldn't go crazy. It'd be simple you know sometimes i know what simple for him is he likes to see me in jeans sneakers in a ball cap with a t-shirt but i don't do that i don't dress like that well that's the reason um i think she she looks good in anything she wears you know but um <laughs> but um she looks good in anything she wears but she tends to dress up and sometimes i just want to see her you know there's nothing wrong with sweats and nice sneakers and a top to match. And I think she looks good in a ball cap or take her back. It might be showing my age. You might not know, but take it back to like the fly girls and like um, in living color. I've seen you that. Know? Yeah. I like the, not the street wear, but just the casual look sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes. Whether we go out and she's dressed in a little gown or whether we're sitting around the house and she's got sweats on and a t-shirt, it's it's all the same to me. So. so did you have any fears other than a clown suit, which is a bit extreme, but did you have any fears about what she was going to have you wear? I thought she was going to pick a suit um, and I was dreading it because it was hot yesterday. Mm -hmm. and I said, I'm, I'm just- it. Remember, I wanted you to wear a I'm, jacket. Yeah, I'm just going to be hot miserable um you know if i'm not feeling comfortable then i'm not going to want to be there yeah no know, one but, could have anticipated record heat <laughs> this week <laughs> what was it yesterday 111 or something like that something crazy like that so and i didn't want him I, I wanted him to trust me so i didn't want to go too far but i mm -hmm. did think i put in the dress jacket with the jeans i think that's super sexy um and i told him before to put it on and he just doesn't do it but then I didn't want him to feel too uncomfortable because then it's going to take away from the experience. Right. I'm going to go ahead that far. So. Well, it sounds like you went into it with the right attitude. You should trust that he would do the same for you. I think we'd, we'd I do think, it again, right? I think, yeah, I think it's not that I don't trust him. It's just me. Like, I can, it's just, I'm really, really particular. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like to give a way to um, give up the control. I was fine with it. Would dress me, pick the clothes, and I'll wear them. I don't know. Like, I plan, like, tonight we're going to go out. I already have my outfit. You know, like, I'm a planner. I, yes. I, I, have, I have this OCD kind of thing. So that scares me because I guess you're right, losing control. You want to let me pick the outfit tonight? <laughs> no. See? It's okay. Well, well, that's a spontaneous decision, and I understand that. If I already have my outfit picked, I don't want someone to change it on me. I did. They, but they, you could plan on a future date where you're going to give up control of your outfit, where it's not he's removing I, what you already planned. The plan is he chooses. Right. Yeah, I, I think I was thinking last night as we were eating, maybe in the future, um, especially in the winter when it's a little cooler, mm -hmm. uh, we go out and purchase each other's outfit. Oh, that way, that's a great idea. That way, 
surprise because right. I basically knew what was in the closet. Right. Even though, I like that idea. Even though I forgot, you know, the that shirt. shirt existed. But uh, I don't know how she found it in the back of the closet or something. But um, <laughs> you don't I, want to know where I found uh, it. I think in the future. <laughs> Yeah, that we takes just, it even further because with this, uh, you had the comfort of knowing, well, it's going to be something I already own. So it's not like she's going to go out and, you know, get a crop top you know, for me to walk around. <laughs> maybe we should do it on Sunday. I'm taking him out Sunday for a surprise for Father's Day. Maybe we should do it. Maybe we should go shopping. Well, then I can then I can get the um, assistant at the store to try clothes on for me and I'll <laughs> I'll sit back like pretty woman and shake my head. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> but no it was a great it was a good experience right? i enjoyed it yeah, yeah even more fun. so when um he was the main attraction at the bar because the bartender said that that was just uh, amazing i was right. like smiling. i'm like i did that's so that right. was, yeah that was pretty neat and he, that gave us, he gave us a free drink because yeah. he liked the shirt so. Yeah. yeah so that was kind of nice that it was acknowledged you know I yeah guess you look like your wife bonus points it. I mean, I felt some kind of way, like, wait a second, you know, looks like your wife dressed you tonight. Wait a second, I can dress, you know, but it is what it is. It was, I'm glad that he, he, um, joined, I joined in in this experience. It was kind of fun. Very cool. Well, I would like to hear about the work that the two of you do. What well, I, I work, um, in finance. I work for a bank, Barclays, which is a UK company. I've been there a year and I love it. So it's just finance, um, dealing with um, money. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, bilingual one, right? Yes, I'm actually bilingual. Yeah, I enjoy uh, my Spanish people. So that's all I do. It's important work though, finance. <laughs> Having somebody in the, in the home who can handle the finances, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, I, and it has taught me a lot, a lot how to manage my own finance, how it all works, how it all links together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've improved tremendously in um, my personal um, finance, how everything links in. Oh, what are personal? Well, I have to take care of my own too. You have to take care of your own too. I don't have well, to. Well, we recently got the, um, the ring doorbell. So. <laughs> You know the doorbell when somebody walks up to the door and it alerts your phone. Oh, okay. You didn't know about that? No. Okay, it's, it's a doorbell. System, yeah. And as it with a camera, and as somebody walks up about ten feet away from the door, um, it alerts you on your phone that somebody's you at see, your front door. Yeah, you can see mm -hmm. them and you can talk to them. Like and you can literally talk to them over your phone and say, "Just leave the package there." So, with her talking about finances, <laughs> since mm -hmm. we got the ring doorbell. Um, I'm starting to get a, plenty of alerts every day on the prime guy coming. The Amazon yeah, that would guy. be very distracting for me while I'm writing. I don't think I would yeah. want that. <laughs> That's everything. So when she talk about finances, I'm thinking about all the packages that are coming in the mail every day. See, it allowed me to be able to do that, you know, that I okay. can buy. And, and the only reason that's happening is because we're going to vacation um, mm -hmm. to Vajalta next month. And everything that I'm getting is for that. It's, it's my, going to be my birthday. So I'm making this trip nice. So that's the only reason all these packages are coming. It's that bathing suit, it's that birthday dress. <laughs> yeah, just wait um, till you see her in them. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know all new stuff. My my luggage has all new stuff. Very I'll, cool. I'll take the outfit that she made, she put together for me. So we'll see how that goes. And now your turn, what do you do? Um. Disabled veteran, um, so I don't work right now. I um, started writing a book, what, a year and a half ago, uh, called As You Were. It covers my time in the US Army, the military. Um, basically, long story short, I was supposed to get out the military for a back injury. Um, as I was, as that process was going on, we received orders saying that we were getting, um, sent overseas to Iraq. This was 2003. Mm -hmm. So uh, the orders, were, all the medical boards were just scratched from that point. And I went over to Iraq, um, worked over there. I was there for a year and a day. Um, I was a mechanic. And then um, because of my, 
leadership skills or height or whatever. I was um, sent to work at an enemy prison of war site with uh, terrorists and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's what the book covers, the, my experiences at the prison, the characters that I met, um, the innocent ones, the ones that I bonded with, the, um, the evil, the worst of the worst that were there also, and um, just how it, the whole experience affected me and then how it affected me once I got home. And um, I developed PTSD due to the amount of time I was there. The standard operation procedure, the SOP as they call it in the military, is you're only supposed to be at the prison site for two weeks at a time because it can mm -hmm. be detrimental um, mentally and physically. But um, I was there for eight months straight, um, no days off, no vacation, mm -hmm. 12 hours a day dealing with these prisoners. So when I first got there, we were on prisoner 400. And eight months later, when we left, it was prisoner 6,000. Oh, my so goodness. They weren't all bad people. They weren't all bad people. Some people were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. uh, some were called red-handed trying to attack soldiers and kill soldiers. So just the process, it was. His story, um, I then um, bonded with Abraham. It's one of his characters in his story. I love me some Abraham. So he's part of one of the characters. Right? Abraham was a That's character. That's the chapter that I read. <laughs> I say the chapter, oh. he, looks, he looks like Abraham Lincoln a little. So um, in order, I couldn't, sometimes I couldn't pronounce the names or there was so many different prisoners there that um, we would have to come up with nicknames. So Abraham, and I was usually the one who came up with the nicknames and it stuck with all the guards. So mm -hmm. to this day, if I call someone and say, hey, remember Abraham? Well, they remember that guy. I mean, we had Abraham, Crybaby, um, Mr. Madame. Uh, we had Hope. You'll have to read the book when it comes out and you'll get a gist of why all these people have nicknames like that. But mm -hmm. um, Right now it's in the editing phase. I sent you the chapter. You sent back some good feedback. You know, a lot of unnecessary words in there. <laughs> like, here's the thing, I'm a storyteller. Uh, I get togethers, I'm not trying to brag or toot my own horn, but I get togethers, people tend to circle around me and we're having fun, we're laughing and joking. I'll tell jokes, tell stories. Mm -hmm. So that's how the book originated because a few people would say, hey, tell them about the time in Iraq, you know, and I'll use some sense of humor. So um, eventually people were like, you need to put it in a book. And what a process, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah. I think the hardest thing is you get it down on paper and then you just want to sit back and say, okay, I'm done. But getting it down on paper is the easy part. Then you have to get the editing done mm -hmm. and the format and then more editing and more editing and you know so i kind of sat away from it for probably two or three months and then i was like you know what i gotta get back on this so it's, an it, it's good to take a break sometimes though because then you can come at it with a fresh set of eyes and all right what am i doing here you know it your brain won't automatically fill in whatever you were trying to say if you take a break from it I think my problem was I was writing it like I was at a party telling the story. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone's first draft is terrible. So. Right. 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 Yeah. So. And for you know, my getting... my audience who is trying to reconcile your accent with your work with the U.S. government, you know, working for the military, could you explain that for them? I'm from Liverpool, England, home of the Beatles. Um, my father is American. My mother's English. I moved to the States in 2000, 2000, no, 1994, 1994. Yeah, at 19, like. Yeah, my age is wrong. <laughs> 2004, at the age of 19. And uh, with my father being American, my mother being English, I have dual citizenship. So I was able to join the military at 24, the US military. Yeah, that's very cool. So yeah, so we had the English fellow in the military. That was always in the U.S. military. That was always fun. A lot of people think I'm from Boston, but it's <laughs> <That's little> funny. 
Yeah, a little cool. So. And then I also want to note, you know, you and I met at a film mixer. What do you do in the filmmaking community? Um, I was in a movie. Yes, she was. I was. I was in the same one that she was in, the... Um, the documentary one. Yes, about the, the Chaplin Doe one with... Um, you played the Indian? Yeah, the Indian I was the mother. Daughter, the mother? Yeah, I played the father. Um, you know what? I, He's done a couple movies. Yeah, maybe this is kind of... You think it's big, but, you know, the um, film community is very small. Yeah. I wasn't doing anything with film or acting or anything, and then um, went to a few little get-togethers and got asked, hey, do you want to do extra work or background work? And, you know, it was just a new experience. That I'm always open to new experiences. So um, did a few films, backgrounds. Also did, you know, security guards and stuff like that for, like, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, Chinese movie. Seven days alive. It is. I found I found my little clips online. Yeah, we find right. You. It's like if you blink, you'll miss me. But <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have to blink. But no, so I've done a few. Done a few. Um, little film. It's interesting. It's, theater work. It's you fun done, to do. You done theater work. I did theater. I did a musical. Yeah, a musical. Wow, Which was, one? What oh was my it goodness. called? Um, and he sang in the musical. I forget it didn't. We only did it like two nights. It was like five, six years ago. I forget what it, wasn't it was that called. Long ago, five, six years ago. It was because we always say that, but with the COVID year, we kind of well, forget compared about. to Rising Eagle, it's it's a long time. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, yeah, I've done a little acting, done a little PA work, um, did a little. Recently, I did some COVID compliance officer. Mm -hmm. For um, CSI Las Vegas, the reboot in CSI Las Vegas. Yeah, and he, you are the Henderson. Like, if you go to the Rainbow, actually, mm -hmm. playing. Oh, yeah. For the Henderson. A few months ago, they did a video promoting Henderson, downtown Water Street in Henderson. And very I was familiar in a bar. with that. Yeah, I was in a bar down there, uh, a brewery down there, and they did the film and then everything. So, we did go to the Rainbow like a month ago. And as we're standing there, waiting to go in, <laughs> said, hey, I was just on the screen. And she was like, what? I said, I was just on the screen. So, and yesterday I got to see it So again. we stood there for another five, six minutes, and a quick high five. You give somebody a high five. And then up. you were also in the golf, in the spread for the golf. Then we also did a photo shoot for um, Henderson as well. Henderson golf courses out there in Lake Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. forget about so, so you just, do all kinds of stuff. Yes, yeah. and uh, he has actually done a lot of work um, in the film yeah, industry. The, yeah, um, the, the best one I've done so far was the CSI COVID compliance officer mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Um, they were filming downtown in uh, Fremont Street and the alleyways and everything. So, hey, it's an uh, important job that gets us back to work, you know? Yeah, so my job was just to um, maintain social distancing, make sure people had the correct masks on. And for a while there, I thought my name was sorry because every time <laughs> I walked Oh, they go. Sorry, I'm putting yeah. the mask back. But <laughs> the LA production team, they were they were a lot stricter on the COVID compliance. Because you went to LA. Situation. You went to Los Angeles for a week. And went to Los event. Angeles and did uh did the same COVID compliance for Invisalign commercial. That was mm -hmm. that was interesting to see how they did it. Um, yeah. Seven days to do one commercial, like thirty second commercial. Right. But, it happens though. Yeah. So. I'm not in it to make it big or make the big bucks. It's just interesting to me, you know, to see the process and how everything from the start to the end. Right. And, and who then, knows, maybe one day this book will become a movie. There right. we go. And like I said, she's jumped in a few, um, I tried to, what is it? Rise and Eagle, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. I told her, Hey, they want you to play this role. And she was like, no. And I said, look, worst of the worst. This may be something that our children can look back on, you know, and say, hey, look, mom and dad were in the we're in this movie or this short film, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So have fun doing I'm it. pretty adventurous. It's funny because you play my parents, but we <laughs> didn't have any scenes together. <laughs> no, no. I I'm very adventurous. Um, so I'm pretty much good for anything, really. It just I was a very a, a little timid in doing it. Um, for the first time but once i did mm -hmm. it i'm like 
Yeah, and it was interesting, right? Yeah. And it was a good story also that we were portraying on film. Yeah. M- more so, I'm on yeah. to reality, like true. I'm, I've watched so many documentaries. I, I love them. I love them. And even when we go to the movie theaters, it's a true story. I come home and Google everything because I want to know. Right. You want to know all the details and you know, yes. check I, out I, IMDb. So do you both have IMDb credits? I've got a few. I believe hers should be coming up in the future for uh, Rising Eagle. Well, now you both have another one. You'll be added to this show. And on that, I want to thank you both for sharing your vulnerability and working out some of these trust issues on screen. No, we went all over the place with it. Yes, it was great, though. It was really wonderful. Tell the audience where they can find out more about you and how they can support your work. Um, Scouser in Vegas is the Instagram. It's S-C-O-U-S-E-R-I-N Vegas. Um, You're probably confused on that one. (laughs) Scouser is, it's a term that they call people from Liverpool. Um, It's not a bad term. Sorry, my phone was ringing. It's not a bad term. It originates from Norwegian sailors that used to come to the port Mm -hmm. and they used to make do called, what is it? Lob Scouts, I believe it is. And oh, the, the Liverpool happened. people started making this stew, and we just go by Scousers now. So it's not a it's not a bad thing. As soon as I meet someone from England, they say, "Oh, there's a Scouser." So it's not a bad thing. But um, yeah, so it's Scouser S C O U S E R in Vegas on Instagram, and you know, sometime in the future, I'll figure out one for the book. But right now, I'm just concentrating on the book. The book's going to be called As You Were. So um, just look out for that in the future. I'm looking forward for him to continue to write more books. That has been my goal for him because he has such an incredible imagination for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, he does. He does. Um, and people notice it all the time. Like he says in group settings, he's always, everybody loves him. He always has stories. So I'm kind of pushing him to kind of concentrate on doing that more consistently. That's wonderful. Well, it's, it's great to have someone like my, you in his corner. Yeah. Once I get my office back and I'm not in the garage sweating, then, uh, you know, it's temporary. She's going back to work soon. Right, and, yeah. Uh, so. Jamar, we I all know. suffer for our art, okay? Exactly. <laughs> but I want this, this creativity um, to flourish more, to flourish. So hopefully once he's in here, he can dedicate himself more to um, his book. So, Tanya, I'm, I'm hoping we didn't go too far off subject. We were talking about all crazy stuff. So, uh, no, that's fine. Thank you both for being on the show. It, Victoria, did you want to share any of your social media? You don't have to if you don't want to, but I didn't want to exclude you. Yeah, well, let me just it. say, let me just say, for everybody watching couples, dr- let your partner dress you. Yes. Yeah, they may dress you. You might have great fashion sense yourself and they may dress you in something that you'd wear they may also dress you in something you may not wear but go ahead and take that risk take the dive and i think it's it's an experience that brings couples together it gives them an insight of what their significant others would like to see them in yeah it was definitely a good experience i enjoyed it a hundred percent so i'm going to let him do it to me yes (laughs) Not today. You heard it, everyone. You heard yeah, it. So. I will. I will. hundred percent. I would like to see um, what he does um, and how comfortable I'm going to feel. And see, but I, I will do it hundred percent. You That's heard true. it here. Well, thank you uh-huh. everyone for watching and for tuning in again. If you like what you see here, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment for them in the, so that they know that you enjoyed <laughs> their entertaining <laughs> revelations here. And until next time, just remember to treat love like a verb. Thank you.